In every issue we have a special item that we look at and this time we're going to look at the housing market, uh, particularly in the UK, but also we're going to look at some work on the extent to which private debt has grown in many other parts of the world in the last few years as well and a lot of it has been secured on residential housing. So one of the key observations is why has housing on average become so unaffordable? Now, one of the drivers of the increase uh, in housing uh, expense are the low interest rates we've got. They've driven up house prices because it's been easier to buy them or cheaper for those people who've been able to buy them. But what we're also finding is that one of the things that really matters is the extent to which houses are built relative to population growth. So it's a supply question as well. It's almost very easy to say let's build more housing because in the models that we look at, if we increase supply, then for a given shift in demand, you're not going to get such a large increase in prices. But that needs very detailed analysis of where houses can be built. Paul Cheshire, for example, in our review, points to a particular town that's the beneficiary of a stop under the Crossrail link. But there have been no houses built there in the last four or five years. So this new node, which will get you into London in 30 minutes, hasn't been given sufficient attention for the development of housing. Other research from the Ministry of Housing um, has looked at the amount of greenbelt you need to release in order to reduce the pressure on affordability. And we're talking about very small fractions of greenbelt. It's not huge amounts. It just requires local government and national government and planners to think about where they can build so that the relatively small amounts of greenbelt that need to be built upon can be built upon, therefore making new homes more affordable to people so that they can start their lives together.